All right, new this morning, Bobcats and Grizzlies. Well, they've been brawling in Montana's wild for decades. Our Jay Cohn takes us back through the history of the game when it was known as the Copper Bowl. In 1926, Butte was home to 70,000 people. The depression had cut into the city's population, but the richest hill on earth was still Montana's financial and cultural center. The Copper Bowl Gridiron Classic was the brainchild of the Butte Chamber of Commerce. Students and fans would arrive by special trains. Boat teams would stay at the Finland, the largest hotel in Montana. And a big parade through Uptown Butte became a yearly tradition. The entire weekend was like New Year's Eve and St. Patrick's Day all rolled into one. Luetta Payne, Butte resident. Here at Clark Park once stood the largest stadium in the state. It could seat up to 8,000 people. And that, at the time, was more than the entire population of the city of Bozeman. Sure enough, for the very first Copper Bowl in 1926, more than 8,500 fans crammed in to witness history. Newspapers reported it as the biggest crowd ever assembled for a sports event in the Treasure State. Prior to kickoff, bands from both schools joined together for the national anthem and the state song. Streamers of Bobcat and Grizz colors were launched into the sky, much to the crowd's delight. It was indeed a joyous way to kick off Montana's biggest football game of the year, Butte Resident. Included in Copper Bowl history, perhaps the very first taunting call. It happened in 1929. Jerry Ryan of Deer Lodge was flagged 15 yards for talking as he warmed up on the Grizzly sideline. In 1932, when the Cats rallied in the fourth quarter to win, Grizz coach Bunny Oaks was furious. We're so rotten, I think we ought to play our games in Denmark from now on. Bernard Bunny Oaks, Grizzly coach. Two years later, Oaks would surprise the Cats, opening the game with his shock troops of reserve players. Those reserves pulled off three straight double lateral pass plays en route to a 32 to nothing Grizz shutout. The first of eight scoreless years for the Cats. It was standing room only when the game moved to the new Butte High School field in 1939. Standout Jack Swarthout, a future head coach for the Grizz, would lead Montana in passing that season from his fullback position. And in 1947, a classic story of Cat Grizz irony when former Grizz halfback Barney Berger of Billings kicked the game-winning points for the Cats. The brawls in Butte came to an end in 1950, but the stories and the legends live on. Names like Bobcat greats Max Worthington, Bob Graham, and Ray Bazzetti, while Naseby Reinhardt, Bill Lasetich, and S.O. Naranchi etched their names in Grizzly lore. One of the most intriguing chapters in one of the country's most storied rivalries. In Butte, I'm Jay Cohn, reporting for MTN Sports. A lot of actions happening this weekend, but before that game kicks off, you can catch our special Big Sky Showdown tonight at 6 or Saturday morning at 11, right before the game. And then, of course, kickoff is at noon, and you can watch it right here on KTVQ. Still